So in this short video, we're going to look at the Dieckmann condensation. So we're getting pretty heavy into the name reactions now. So a Dieckmann condensation is an intramolecular claisen. So remember this word. Intramolecular, both the nucleophile and the electrophile are within the same molecule. So we've seen that a Claisen reaction is the condensation of two esters. We've seen the self condensation and the crossed condensation. So a Dieckmann, for it to be intermolecular, it's going to be a molecule that has two esters. So the example we'll look at is the following. So this is a, a diester. We are going to treat that again under the standard conditions of base so sodium ethoxide and ethanol. And then remember the driving force to complete the reaction. We have to do an acidic workup to do the final protonation. This molecule being a diester is called diethyl adipate. And this name comes from the number of carbons between the two carbonyls. So let, let's do an analysis so we have two esters. Remember these carbons are oxidation state three. Esters have a single alpha carbon. Each of those has two hydrogens. So we're drawing in the hydrogens that we haven't shown prior. And what I want to do now is, is just do a count from each alpha carbon to the other carbonyl. So if we're starting at this alpha carbon, and we count over to that carbonyl, so the exercise we're doing is determining the size of the ring that's going to form when the enolate attacks the ester. So from this alpha carbon, if we call that 1, remember the nucleophile drives the arrow. We generate the enolate here. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this one would form a five-membered ring. Let's do the exercise from the other alpha carbon. If we generate the enolate here, it's one, two, three, four, five. That's also going to generate a five-membered ring. So at this point, it does not matter which alpha carbon is deprotonated. So let's go ahead and show the acid-base reaction that occurs. So that's going to abstract alpha proton, that sets up our equilibrium. So I'm going to draw the, the actual enolate form with the negative charge residing on oxygen. So again, here's our ester enolate. This is going to be our nucleophile, and we've seen plenty of times already a carbonyl Carbon is electrophilic based on electronegativity differences between the carbon and oxygen here. So we have nucleophile attacking an electrophile. So this will come back down. The alpha carbon is now the nucleophile. So let's do a count. One, two, three, four, five. Attack from this carbon to this carbon. Electrons then go on to oxygen. So we're forming a five-membered ring. So remember, this is the nucleophilic acyl substitution at this point. So let's draw a five-membered ring. Let's just number it. One, two, three, four, five. So we know carbon one was the nucleophile. Now the ester portion of that molecule is bonded 
to that carbon. We go around the ring, then we hit five. So at this stage, we've gone from sp2 to sp3 hybridization. So we're showing that. Also, the oxidation state changes from three to two. So this is the bond that we just formed. So here's our alpha carbon. Remember, the big picture of this is a substitution of an alpha proton for some other group. This is then, this is the addition. We're now doing the elimination. So elimination is formation of a double bond. We're losing sodium ethoxide. So at this point, we're still in equilibrium. That generates the ketone back at carbon 5. There's our ethyl ester, so this is a again a beta keto ester. We've generated a compound with sufficient acidity to be deprotonated by the sodium ethoxide. So remember this step now gets us out of equilibrium. It's the driving force for the reaction. I'm going to draw the enolate form of this. So the reaction will sit at this stage until we acidify, we drop the pH. Once we do that, it's a simple acid-base reaction. So this is going to come back, be protonated at the alpha position, and we end up with our final neutral product, which I'm going to draw as the beta keto ester. So the name of this molecule is ethyl. 2-oxo, so that's how we name a, a carbonyl and a ketone substituent, cyclopentane, and then carboxylate. So that would be all one word. I ran out of room. So we, just to review, a Dieckmann condensation is an intramolecular clason meaning both the nucleophile and the electrophile in the same molecule. In the big picture, you have a diester that undergoes clasin, and you're producing a beta-keto ester. So alpha, beta, that's a beta-keto ester. Deprotonation of an alpha carbon generates the enolate. The enolate attacks the other ester carbonyl. You form your sp3 carbon here that then undergoes elimination to the carbonyl. The driving force is deprotonation of that acidic proton to get you your stabilized enolate, which is protonated to give you your final product.